there anything better than starting a new year with uh, shooting some birds in the face? I don't think so. So it's January 1st. I slept in though. I was supposed to be here like earlier before that sun came up. But uh, it's still technically going to count this as a scouting mission. So I'm at a place called Tribble Mill Park in the greater Atlanta metro area. I mean, we're kind of like east northeast of Atlanta, but there's still a crap ton of people. I'm never going to get used to this east coast thing. There's too many people out here. I don't know how you guys live out here. Fortunately, I'll be back in New Mexico soon. But for now, I'm hunting a hooded merganser. I found him a couple weeks ago, but I spooked him. So today, I came back and I brought some camo stuff. I brought a little cheapo ghillie blanket that I bought off Amazon. I'm gonna give a try. Oh crap. You know what else I just realized? I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. You know what you can't do with wildlife photography very well? Skate shoes. Skate shoes and wildlife photography don't mix. I'm gonna go put my boots on. This much better than this, unless you're riding this. <laughs> How many wildlife photographers do you know there are skateboarders too? I don't know any. All right, round two. Boots, camera, camo, gloves, hat. It's like 30 something degrees out here. It's not cold though, there's no wind. So, as I was saying, I'm looking for a hooded merganser. They're one of my favorite ducks. I saw an eBird a few weeks ago. There was one here. I came out and I found it, but I spooked it. So now I'm gonna try to be a little more sneaky. The problem is, it's too late. I should have came earlier, but I'm not gonna let that stop me. There's a lot of other wildlife out here. Let's go find some. If I was a landscape photographer right now, I'd be very interested in this kind of stuff. Backlight, moss, awesome tree roots. But uh, right now I gotta keep my wildlife photography hat on because I get distracted way too easily. Normally, too, when I'm vlogging, I use my 1DX2. If you guys follow my channel, you've probably seen some of my normal vlogs. I usually use my 1DX2 to vlog which is not optimal in any scenario, but it's good quality and it's all I have. And uh, I use my 5D4 to shoot, but doing wildlife video and trying to be sneaky, I don't want to be carrying around my 1DX2. I do have it in my bag though, just in case, but that's more for a uh, bird in flight scenario. If I see any birds in flight, I'll switch to the 1DX2. It's a better setup for that. So right now I'm vlogging, doing all this on my phone, the Note 10 Plus, so hopefully it does well, but it's a lot easier to carry and move through these woods and stuff than dealing with the 1D. You know what I really want? I don't know if you could see it, but there's a lot of these like branches from the trees sticking up out of the water. I really want to get a bird on that. There's one right out there. The sunlight is just hitting it and nothing else. I would love to get a bird. I don't even care what kind of bird. Kingfisher. Heck, I'd even take a Phoebe right now. Titmouse. I don't know. There's a lot of titmouse out here. A lot of uh, tufted titmouse, which are pretty cool. I'm pretty sure I'll see one of them or a few of them out here. Hopefully, I'll get a good shot. Found some deer tracks. That's a good sign. Love to see a deer too. All the things I took for granted in New Mexico, cause I had it like literally had a pack of deer. Pretty sure pack is a collective term for deer. <laughs> Living in my backyard in New Mexico. Oh, that's pretty. 
one thing we don't have in New Mexico is water. So seeing stuff like this is really nice. I love the trails out here. All right, first good sign. I just heard some ducks. Sounded like a mallard. Whoa, this is slippy. It's a lot of granite out here. When it gets wet, very slippy. Anyways, I just heard some ducks. Mallards coming from over there. Not really looking for a mallard. However, when I saw that merganser a couple weeks ago and I spooked him, he was hanging out with a little harem of mallards. He had like five mallard female with him. So, hopefully there'll be something out here. There's also, I'm also looking for uh, golden eye and bufflehead. I saw an e-bird. Both of those two species seen here in the last two weeks. And they were both on this little tiny lake. Hopefully, I'll find them. All right, I found a good lookout point and randomly a swing. I'm gonna set down here. I hear the mallards, they're over there. I'm gonna see where they are, see if I can see them with the lens. All right, there's some mallards. There's some mallards circling right out there, a little ways out. There are two pied billed grebes. So I'm going to kind of stake out here. I'm going to see if I can get a little more comfortable. Get behind that bush. I will don the ghillie blanket if I need to, but right now they're so far out, I don't think I need to. Here they come again. They're still pretty far out. Looks like we're starting to get a little bit of activity. I was just about ready to give up and go find the forest birds. I also saw a hawk fly over a little bit ago. Let's see if I can get him too. Probably red-shouldered. He looked pretty big. Could have been a red-tailed. All right, I'm gonna get comfortable now. All right, well, I'm just gonna sit right here. Get comfy. And hope that they do some laps. This isn't the best quality product in the world. It was $30 on Amazon. <laughs> this came with it. I'm gonna test it out though. Can you still see me? <laughs> I'm laughing right now. <laughs> I don't have my camo gloves yet, so I'm just gonna have to use regular gloves. Also don't have my lens skirt yet so i'm just gonna kind of keep it draped underneath this thing it's not the perfect camo hide setup but uh i'm hoping i'm hoping it'll do all right we'll see what we get all right they're starting to get closer now time to creep into position this ground is really really cold I didn't bring my pad. That was a mistake. They're getting really close now. They're coming right towards me. All right, they're starting to dive now. So while they're under, <laughs> while they're under, I'm gonna get under this completely so that I can see what the heck I'm doing. I should have switched to my 1DX2. This burst mode is not good enough. Okay, they went around the bank now. They're gone. And I feel like I'm trapped in this stuff. I just scared the living crap out of some joggers. This woman was like on the phone. She was just talking to somebody and then she just like stopped and let out a little shriek. She saw me right here. Oh my god, I just had a heart attack. Some guy in camo. <laughs> I don't think she could see that I had a camera. Good times. I hear those chickadees and the titmouse. Now, let's go find a titmouse. Change it up a little bit.
Okay, so I'm on a different lake now, kind of uh, adjacent to the one I was at. This lake is much bigger, no ducks anywhere in sight. More importantly, no people anywhere in sight. There's a couple fishers out there, fishermen in a boat. I did find my titmouse, uh, a couple of them, and ruby crowned kinglets. Not sure if I got a good shot of that or not and some eastern bluebirds. So it wasn't a horrible loss. Definitely wasn't the uh, waterfowl that I was looking for, except for the pied beetle grebes, of course, which was pretty cool. So a couple thoughts on uh, today's outing and wildlife in general. Number one, if you live on the east coast, I'm sorry. There's too many people here. I can't wait to get back home to New Mexico where there's like five people in that whole state. Number two, if you go out on a holiday when people don't work and their kids aren't in school, it's going to be a lot of people. And I, I definitely try not to be, I mean, it's always frustrating when, especially in wildlife, when you go through the effort of getting out and, you know, like getting your camo and your ghillie blankets and looking like a complete dork. <laughs> it's always frustrating when you're willing to go through all that effort and then uh, I had five people walk up to me today and ask me if I was getting good photos as I'm trying to take a photo, you know, and it's like, I try not to get frustrated with that kind of stuff because I can't fault anybody for being out here. And I certainly don't want to have a negative attitude about people being out here. i photographers are no more important than anybody else. Wow. All right. This is uh, interrupted by a giant great blue heron is that redundant giant great blue heron i mean are there great blue herons that aren't giant because uh, it's in their name that they're great there is one right over there on the other side of the pond he's too far away but uh, i'll snap a shot for you so you can see him all right a couple of other things that i wanted to note about if you're serious about wildlife for one get up earlier than i did today <laughs> if i would have come out here earlier before sunrise i would have had a much better chance of getting set up before joggers and dogs and even before the birds really um, it, it would have been better so I treat this as a scouting trip that's the other thing is when you go out especially if it's a local place don't go out with the intention of creating you know National Geographic style images every time just go out with the intent to be in nature and uh, with the intent to document and study you know I'm every time I come out here I'm learning more about these ducks habits you know and and where they are and and what are they feeding when are they feeding uh the wind patterns pay attention to the wind and the sun you know waterfowl they take off into the wind uh it's like basic plane physics you know so pay attention to that and uh if you want birds in flight and stuff like that if you want that kind of stuff you want the wind to your back that's the best i mean you don't always have that option uh but pay attention to the stuff like that all right i think i'm gonna wrap it up here i've probably done a lot of talking that's that's how i roll if you're new to this channel uh, i have been accused by one or two people of talking too much but i try to balance it out with uh, overall good videos so hopefully you enjoyed this hopefully you got something out of it even though these coasts there's a ton of people out here there's still opportunities for wildlife if you put some effort into it like i said i've been going on ebird i've been looking up uh, sightings i've been looking at the satellite maps and seeing where can i go and where has public access and then just getting out getting up in the morning that's the hardest part but just make it happen and for me it's just photography is uh, the excuse to be outside in nature i just i absolutely love it all right last last bit of advice for uh photography wildlife photography if you want to be a wildlife photographer just and i'm dead serious about this just accept the fact that you're gonna have crazy hair <laughs> i've had that hood on all morning my hair's absolutely crazy there's a big turkey vulture hovering over this great blue heron and he's like tripping out <laughs> anyways that's it for me here's all the stuff that i got i hope you guys enjoyed that subscribe to the channel if you haven't already i've got new videos every week hit that like button if you enjoyed this video leave me a comment if you have anything uh, you want to know about wildlife photography or anything like that down below i'll definitely answer them thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one